to the Development Review Board meeting for Tuesday, October 15, 2019. My name is Matt Cota, the chairperson of the DRB. With me is Jim Langdon, Don Philbert, Brian Sullivan, Marla Keene, Development Review Planner, and Delilah Hall, South Burlington Zoning Administrator. Thank you for those in attendance and those watching online. Anyone who wishes to participate in the hearing should sign the sign-in sheet in the back and provide their contact information. In order to be considered a participant, you can fill out the sign-in sheet or speak during the public comment portion of the hearing or submit comments in writing. You should do one of these things if you want to obtain party status, should you decide in the future to appeal the decision made by this board. Um, item number one on the agenda tonight, uh, directions and emergency evacuation procedures from the conference room. There are four exits, two there, two here, should you decide, should we have to leave in a hurry for any reason. Um, additions, deletions, or changes in the order of agenda items? Seeing none. Uh, Yeah, I was going to do that. I'll do that in the next one. Okay. <laughs> Comments and questions from the public not related to the agenda. Is there anything that's not on the agenda that you'd like to address? Seeing none. Uh, announcements. Um, yes, I have two announcements. Um, first, I'd like to publicly thank um, Brian Sullivan. I was gone the last two meetings, and he uh, 10 seconds after being greeted from vice chair, I stepped in the chair, so thank you for that. I appreciate it. Those are two unavoidable absences related to my professional life. Um, uh, number two, uh, we are down a development review board member, uh, Frank Kochman, who's been on the development review board, uh, development review board for about three and a half years, uh, resigned. Uh, so there is an opening, um, and I'm sure it'll be publicized soon uh, for someone to consider it. Uh, we will miss Frank very much. Uh, Frank uh, loved playing the Couturian and offering his opinions, uh, and it was, uh, it was, we will miss him on the board. Um, third, um, I participated in a uh, hearing before the City Council uh, last Monday regarding minimum parking standards. I reiterated the position that uh, we discussed at length. Uh, the Development Review Board, Frank Kochman was there with me, um, and our position uh, them uh, was uh, that we wanted to keep some level of minimum parking standards to allow us to wave, uh, to allow the development review board to have a say on where parking should be, when parking, how, how many parking spaces should be uh, applied at a development. Uh, we lost that vote. That vote went three to two, and uh, we will uh, abide by it because we enforce the laws that the planning commission writes and the city council approves. Uh, so I just want to let everyone know that how that ended up. Uh, finally, uh, the last announcement is that item number seven, continued final plan application SD 1927 of Dorset Meadows Associates will not be heard tonight. The reason it won't be heard is because we do not have a quorum. One of the reasons we don't have a quorum is that two members of the board, uh, well one is not present, one has to recuse themselves from their professional life, and the other reason is uh, Mark, <coughs> Bear, who usually joins us by phone, if he can't be here in person, cannot be here tonight for uh, personal reasons, and we're down uh, one development review board member. So with just three members that can be present at Dorset Meadows um, final plot application, SD 1927, we simply cannot hold that hearing tonight. Um, but we can, um, and, and when we get to it, uh, item seven, we'll vote on when to reschedule that. So if you're here for that uh, item tonight, uh, apologize, and we will reschedule that uh, in November. Okay, any other announcements from the board? Then let's go to item five, sketch plan application SD 1926, for Scott McAllister to subdivide an existing 1.2 acre parcel, developed with a single family home into three lots of 0.63 acres, lot one, 0.28 acres, lot two, and 0.28 acres, lot three, for the purpose of constructing one new single family home on each of lots two and three at 1439 Road. Who is here for the applicant? Matt? I would like to just disclose that Scott uh, McAllister, <laughs> one of the applicant, and I were neighbors in Williston for 122 years. I don't believe that poses a um, conflict of interest, but certainly would entertain any concerns about that. I appreciate that. Thank you, Don. Um, just a reminder for the applicants and for those in the public that are here, um, this is a sketch plan. A sketch plan is a high-level review and discussion of where an applicant receives feedback from the board 
on the major elements of a project before it's fully designed. During the meeting, the board may provide oral guidance to the applicant, which constitutes the board's determination that application meets the purposes of the land development regulations. These comments are helped to guide the applicant to a later application that meets the LDR requirements and contributes to the goals of the comprehensive plan. This is not a formal hearing, and it does not result in a binding decision, and you don't have to be sworn in. You're here to tell us what you have planned, and we're here to give you some good advice should you decide to come back with the uh, preliminary final plan application and actually go ahead with your plan. So, who is here for the applicant? Uh, I'm Scott McAllister. Hey, this Scott. Is Scott Homestead. I'm Scott Homestead. I'm a civil engineer for Krebs and Lansing Consulting Engineers. Scott, Scott, can you tell us a little bit about what you've got planned? Sure. Um, we have a 1.2 acre uh, parcel on Hinesburg Road, and uh, basically looking to, uh, with an existing house, looking to turn it into three lots. Uh, one approximately a half acre uh, with the existing house and then two smaller quarter acre lots uh, on the east side. So you've got you've got the entrance to the house, the existing house is currently on Hinesburg Road, do I have that right? Correct. And you've got two lots that you'd like to have the entrance on um, Highland Terrace. On Highland Terrace. Okay. You've read the comments from from staff? Yes. Okay, if you don't mind, we'll go over those a little bit. It's perfect. Um, comment number one, staff recommends the board discuss with the applicant the need to provide an option agreement to purchase TDRs prior to final plot approval. For those watching at home and those listening, TDRs are transfer development rights. It's part of our land development regulations to encourage density and open space by allowing developers to purchase TDRs that accomplish both goals. Uh, you're aware of the TDRs and what you need to do in order to get there. Okay. For the most part, yeah. Okay. If you have any questions, contact Marla. Uh, staff recommends the board discuss this issue with the applicant regarding SEQ regulating plan. This is dimensional. This is width versus depth. The two to one. Is there a uh, there's a concern from the staff that it may not fit uh, in one of the lots? Um, I think it's close right now. My my measurements it does meet the two to one okay. ratio right now. Um, this is just a sketch plan yep. as you as you mentioned using uh, tax map lines for for boundaries. When we come back for preliminary and final, we'll have a, a formal boundary survey with um, you know, dimensions down to the hundredth of a foot, and yep. we'll, we'll make sure it meets the, the two to one. Two to one. It's Great. very easy. It, doesn't, it won't have, adjusting that line to meet that wouldn't negatively impact some other standard. It's just so you're not concerned that you won't be able to meet the two to one when you come back for preliminary correct. black? No okay. concerns. Great. Um, item number three regarding Setback. Staff recommends the board discuss the setback criteria with the applicant. That's the setback criteria, which will require a maximum 25 foot setback from the back of the sidewalk, or in this case, the back of the curb, because there's no sidewalk on Highland Terrace. Is that right? Yeah, I, I was interested to discuss this a little bit. I don't think it's a problem by any means, but there, given that there is no sidewalk on Highland Terrace, and there's no actual curb either, uh, it seems. No curb at that location. At that location okay. on Highland there is Terrace. A curb on the, yeah. um, so it would seem to me that that 25 feet from basically the edge of the pavement would, would push the buildings very close to the, the front property line and be a little out of scale with the neighborhood. Well, um, it, it, there's a the home just to the south of that. That there are several homes that would be aren't 25 if I'm if I recall that correctly. They, I was comparing it to some Google Earth images and it it would it would seem to. Like if, again, if, we me if we're measuring from the, the actual edge of the road as opposed to the right-of-way line, it would really, it, it seems very close. Because, I mean, you're talking about having probably 15 feet between the edge of the pavement and the right-of-way, and then now you're gonna only have you know, 10 feet to a building face. And, and if there was ever an idea to put a sidewalk down this road or something like that, you'd be very close. This is something we so, can work out with staff. Right. I, I mean, uh, again, we're not, uh, regulations require us to, to but, like, require you to make it 25 feet right. from I the curb. I didn't see that in the regulation, though. It's, it's under it's, nine, it's, 908 C1. And so I didn't, I didn't see where it was, where there was, uh, or the curb if there's no sidewalk. I read that. Oh, oh I, I, you're, you're questioning where to start the, the 25 feet yes, or the fact that it's exactly. 25 feet? That is my question. Where, okay. okay, go ahead, Marla. Um, that's a fair question. I think that the curb has just been how the um, 908C, whatever, has been interpreted in the Sorry. absence of, in the absence of a sidewalk. Um, okay. 
And I guess that's a good point. So I'm just pulling it up now, and maybe I can read it out loud. Uh, 908C3. Front building setbacks. A close relationship between the building and the street is critical to the ambience of the street environment. Buildings should be set back a maximum of 25 feet from the back of sidewalks. Um, porches, stoops, and balconies may project up to 8 feet into the front setback. Um, so I guess it doesn't specifically say. But it's not 50 feet. Correct. Because the sidewalk, right. you know, so. And then, and then the other thing I would bring up is, is we presented, we showed some building footprints on this plan to show that it, something could be built here yeah. for clarity. Sure. I'm not, I imagine for our preliminary and final plans, we probably won't even show buildings. We would just show envelopes because, you know, these are going to be lots for sale and someone else would come in, you know, administratively to get a building permit. And, also, and going back to that, um, I believe that buildings within the SEQ, so development, applications for development other than for a single family home in the SEQ are required to be reviewed as a PUD. So there is some degree of home design required. Okay. Um, it's pretty limited. It's pretty much limited to the SEQ standards of article eight, sorry, nine. Um, but you know, we would need to see a demonstration that the glazing standards are met, um, the setback standards are met, the lot ratio standards are met. Um, pretty minimal stuff, but it is, there is some degree of home because design required. Because it's a PUD in the SEQ, you have to do, you can't just, it's not a simple subdivision, you have to do okay. a... You have to meet the design. You need like building elevations, materials, those sorts of things? I, uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> a limited building elevation is an application okay. requirement with the understanding that these are going to be built to suit. So um, keep it to demonstrating the minimum okay. requirements so that That's you don't easy. get to tied to something that you don't want to be tied to or the potential buyer doesn't want to be tied to. Um, and that's something we're actually reviewing for the board's benefit. Um, the language that requires all SEQ subdivisions, subdivisions to be PUDs, um, is, it says except for single family homes. Um, so what was given to me when I came on board is that that language means except for a single family home. Um, our intention is to have a conversation with our legal team and perhaps the planning commission, since they were the ones that wrote it, um, as to whether that was intended to be for the purpose of single family homes only. Um, because we've gotten into the situation a couple times where there's a two lot subdivision and it's a PUD and that just feels a little silly. Um, so we may walk that back, which I think would be to your benefit. Regardless, that's this, none of this is a big deal. Okay, yes. good. Glad to hear. And the last bit is the subdivision standards and the purpose of the SEQ and staff considers the proposed subdivision compatible with the complements of plan, which is good news for you. Um, are there any questions uh, the board has for the applicant? Any other comments from the applicant? Uh, it, I just point out that we did go to the city council already for uh, interim zoning and get approval when that approval came in. Just for, for your yep. benefit. Because you're in the SEQ and because SEQ is under interim zoning, that's what that's good. Um, are there any comments from the public regarding this application? Step forward, please. Have a seat and please identify yourself. <coughs> Mark Abrams, 174 Mark. Highland Terrace. Uh, so this is uh, my third uh, time addressing mm -hmm. bodies here. Uh, and uh, I speak to uh, a number of issues. Uh, my primary concern uh, is around uh, the uh, long established neighborhood character uh, of uh, this particular street, and, and I'm, I wonder about others in the city, being affected by uh, what I consider to be a lack of uh, detailed consideration of the effects of uh, 
of adding a lot of much smaller properties to the street. Uh, and uh, I'd like the predictability that uh, is uh, accorded by the city for developers. I think people who've uh, in good faith paid taxes for decades, in my case, uh, almost four decades, uh, to have some predictability and about consistency of the character, uh, character being fairly quiet and uh, spacious. And uh, as I mentioned uh, last month, there's uh, some uh, very pleasant uh, city screening long existing uh, on the west side of Highland Terrace that uh, I would hate to see uh, ruined. It's very hard to, uh, not everything can be screened and uh, new, new stuff going in, but I think a lot of thought should go to destroying it. Uh, there's a, an existing drainage culvert that's been on the, the west side of Highland Terrace. I don't know where that figures in. Uh, I, I raised the issue with Paul Connor in uh, April. Uh, haven't uh, heard back yet from that quarter about the uh, uh, water capacity of the existing aquifer. A number of the neighbors <coughs> draw <coughs> all water from our wells into that aquifer. So I don't, if anybody can speak to laws around that, I'd be very interested in it. I think that should be a factor. And uh, the, uh, uh, it was very interesting to read in the recent news in the other paper and otherwise, uh, I, I quote, the shock to the city of South Burlington City Council on learning that an old established existing neighborhood in South Burlington, Vermont, uh, is not too happy at uh, the prospect of a major uh, change in the uh, nearby character in Burlington, Vermont. And uh, uh, I see parallels there. And I like to go on the record as, as uh, requesting, I, I don't know the uh, intricacies, that the old existing neighborhoods have the opportunity to be grandfathered in in terms of uh, what you have the 8, 10, 12, 13 acre lots uh, not having uh, properties on an acre or two with three or four dwellings. So. Uh, that's, that's where I'm coming from. If worse comes to worse, uh, compromise would be. Uh, I know the, the, uh, what's on the books, uh, but the compromise would be access to these mini developments th uh, through Heinsberg Road. Already driveways exist. I've uh, eyeballed it. And, uh, I think that should be seriously considered uh, if uh, we cannot be grandfathered in. Thank you very much for your comments, Mr. Abrams. Thank you. It, I, I will paraphrase my friend Frank um, as these things come from time to time. There are things that we can do and things that we can't do. With regards to grandfathering in something, that would be something that would be determined by the Planning Commission, approved by the City Council, not by the Development Review Board. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to speak about this? Come on up, Mr. Crawford. You state your name for the record. Dave Crawford, uh, Chair of the uh, Natural Resource Committee. Hi, hey, Dave. Uh, the, we'd um, offer to, the Natural Resource Committee would offer to uh, meet with the applicant uh, if he so desires. It's not required. It's something that uh, you can uh, uh, do and uh, if you want to contact me, we'll get you in contact with the work group. There is a, currently a, we've created a work group that uh, is taking a look at the development procedures and how do we want to evaluate uh, developments. Uh, uh, there does look like on this property that there's going to be some tree removal 
that's one of the kinds of things that the Development Review Board er, works on, and it's something that's of prime interest to the Natural Resource Group. So uh, we haven't done any particular evaluation of this or anything else, and if the developer so chooses, completely up to you. We'll try to. Thank you. Thank you for making that offer, Dave. Appreciate it. Anyone else have any comment regarding this specific project? Well, if not, does the applicant have everything they need from us before to go forward? I believe so. Well, thank you thank for you. visiting with us. And Thanks very much. See you next time. Okay, now we're going to go to item number six, conditional use application CU 1907 of Ashley Truax to construct a 790 foot square foot addition to an existing single family home to be used as a garage and a 552 square foot accessory residential unit at 89 Hadley Road. Who is here for the applicant? Uh, I am. Hi. Can you state your name? Uh, Devin Prino. Devin Bynum? Prino. Bynum. Are there any disclosures for the board? Devin, this is a conditional use application swearing. Yep. So could I have you raise your right hand? You swear to tell the truth under penalty of perjury? Thank you very much. Devin, tell us a little bit about your application. Yep. So uh, on my property on 89 Hadley Road, I would like to uh, do an addition uh, to my second floor. Um, it's like um, one thing I do want to note, though, is on my application, it says that we are adding a second floor. We actually already have a second floor. So we're, it's just a, um, a uh, keep style house, so it does have a second floor. So I just want to make sure it's known that we have a second floor. We're just expanding upon that. And this is your house, correct? Okay, my wife is we don't yep. share the Great. same name, so progressive. Yep. Um, uh, so, yes, yeah, so we're going to be adding on to our second floor, uh, redoing that, adding on to our footprint of our first floor, and that would give us some more uh, square footage on our main home. Um, and then we would like to demolish our detached garage, rebuild it, and then put an apartment above it, uh, whether it's going to be for renting or just for uh, family. That's that's the gist of the project. Have you had a chance to read the staff comments? I have, yes. Let's go through them. Um, item number one, staff recommends the board consider whether to require specific measurement of the proposed height. Um, I think this is a sound recommendation, uh, given experience we've had in the past with homes being uh, additions and homes being built uh, in certain neighborhoods. It makes sense to make sure that the measurement is right uh, sure. before we go through with it. I, I, I tend to agree with that recommendation from staff. I don't know if the board has an opinion, the rest of the board has an opinion, but. I agree, and I think with our experience, part of the measurement of height is determining what you're measuring from. Yes. So that should be spelled out clearly. I think that's a good point, very good point. Yeah, because I just wanted a baseline for where to measure to the peak of the roof from, so that's for sure. It's a lot less expensive to figure out before you build it than after exactly. you build it. Agreed. Um, okay, item number two. Staff recommends the board discuss whether they consider this criteria met. This criteria is, step back, well. Step back relevant comments from the comprehensive plan. The character of the area affected is defined by the purpose or purposes of the zoning district within the project is located in specifically stated policies and standards of the municipal plan. Um, does this change to your home? Not undue, undue adverse effect on the character standards. Right. Does it meet objectives such as build and reinforce diverse walkable neighborhoods, support the retention of existing construction of new and affordable and moderate income housing? Uh, promote higher density mixed use development, and lower density principally residential. Um, tell us a little bit more about your your project. So you, I know you gave a brief description. You're going, yeah. you're 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 you have a second floor, yeah. but you're going, you're taking off the second floor and going higher. Or, or yeah, so the peak of the roof is a bit low. I mean, because the ceiling height is maybe barely six feet, so I want to go a little bit higher with okay. the peak and then go up. Um, so a couple feet, and then go with the extent, uh, full extent of the house. So it's a right now, like I said, it's a cape style house. So it doesn't really go. You doesn't have knee walls. So I want to go the full length, get right. full walls, because um, this is my primary home. So it's um, I definitely want to make this a more of a forever home for me, if possible. So. And what we're looking at there, the white building there, is that the existing, or is that? That's the existing garage. It's I didn't put a lot of effort into catting that up. I'm sorry. So. So is that the one that's coming down? Correct. So what's going in? Is there a is there a is there a picture here? Yep. Yeah. That is that is detached, right? 
currently detached would become attached. Oh, this so will become page attached. Page two is proposed, and page three is existing, or maybe page four is existing. Yeah, page, so page, page three is the. This is existing. That's what it looks like now. Yes. Yep. yep. Page three is the rear yep. proposed. Page two is the front proposed. Correct. And page one is the plan. Those have become more of a colonial home, so. Right. Any comments from the board? Um, in terms of keeping consistency with the neighborhood, have you received any feedback from your neighbors? I have not, no. And they're aware of this proposed project? Yep, so I mean, I sent the letters out to all my immediate neighbors and it's been posted on my um, front of the house for several weeks now. So. Okay, yep. thanks. And I mean, I'm trying to fit with the style of the neighborhood too, I mean, because it's ranches, capes, um, colonials, so it's, well, obviously it's bungalows everywhere, but right. um, yeah, so I just I don't want to make something that's out of place as well. Sure. So. Nor do we. So, uh, is there any issue with uh, using the garage as a rental property in this? No. Okay. Thank you. Good to know. Okay. Um, any other co uh, questions for us? Um, I mean, you did touch on that point about the, um, the reference point on where to measure the height from. Do you have any kind of no, suggestions? It's very specific. Um, so, height is measured from the average pre construction grade, um, <coughs> which is defined as the average of the elevation of the four corners of the building, or the four principal corners of the building, if you have complicated buildings, um, to the midpoint of the roof between the eaves and the apex. Okay. You probably get an average for sure. Uh, is there anyone here that would like to speak to this? Come on up. Can you, uh, you want to do this together or separately or? Together then. Okay, can you state your names then? Nathaniel Merrill. Nathaniel. Sarah Valinsky. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Nathaniel. Um, we just wanted to uh, express, uh, I own 99 Hadley, the house right next door. Uh -huh. um, and I saw these plans just recently. We weren't able to get them till Friday okay. or we might have communicated with you, but yeah. that's fine. Um, but since the meeting was tonight, we decided to stop in. Um, this plan, uh, I'm a little concerned. Uh, I'm not categorically uh, opposed to the plan. I am a little bit concerned about the two-story wall that's going to be basically five feet um, off of my property line. With uh, a line of trees that seems like they'd have to be removed. Which, which wall are you talking about? Uh, Far left of that garage. Right, so that's showing that there's 5.2 feet uh, from the property line to the new proposed garage. Um, and the, the image that you provide here doesn't indicate any windows or anything on that side of the building or anything like that, but I'm just, I'm a little concerned about the optics of you know, my kitchen window looking right out at a two-story wall here, five feet off of the property line. I understand there's there's leeway for the setbacks as laid out in the documents. Um, of course, that's pushing it right to the boundary of the uh, leeways for the set, uh, you know, variances for the setbacks or whatever they call it. Um, that was my only my only issue so to speak with with the uh, the scope of the project I do feel like that the two the two car garage and the two story um, addition of the garage you know that's it's it's almost a second house size being it's going from 12 percent use of the property to 20 percent use of the property but, which is considerable but um, I'm not sure uh, you know like I said, I'm not categorically against it. Uh, I am a little concerned about that setback being uh, five feet and that large wall right there, because my, my house doesn't show on that image, but essentially between that eight foot spruce or eight inch spruce and the 12 inch hemlock is my kitchen window. When, when you say, because I don't have a picture here in my head, when you say wall, so there's an existing wall. Can you see this image? 
Yeah. Let me. So the, the neighborhood is primarily a story and a half. Yep. As you said, bungalows. You're talking about this wall, right? Yeah, that's the wall that faces my kitchen. Oh, okay. So you mean the the wall, the Her wall house. of the of the Proposed garage, not yeah. the not an actual wall. I guess see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It's the yeah. It's that. And, and like I said, I don't see. Obviously, there's no indication of um, how that's going to be finished, or if there's going to be overhangs on the roof or windows facing my house um, or anything like that. In so where that mouse? I'm sorry, Nathaniel. Yeah. Where that where that mouse is pointing right there? Your kitchen window is on the other side of that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So if someone, if there was windows there in that that living space above it, is yeah, that what you're referring well, to? There or? is, there is uh, there's some evergreen trees there that are getting a little long in tooth at this point, but there are some evergreens between there. Um, Do you want to go to the aerial? Would that be helpful? Sorry? The aerial image? Yeah, let me go to the... Yeah, you can see, so right to the right there. Uh, Q. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, and the kitchen is... Actually, that's Camera. that little dark spot is the skylight in the kitchen. That, that, right there. Yeah. Okay. So then there, here's the two trees. Correct. So it's this gap. So the it'd be right yeah. here. So the 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 proposed garage is is you know five feet off of the pro property line is going to be a significant impact on just sort of the visual out the, the that side of the house. Not to mention uh, winter sunlight and everything like that, but. You know, I understand the, the desire to expand the house. Um, anyway, that's that's what I had to say about that. I did have a concern about the um, uh, the use of the apartments. Essentially, if I understand correctly, it can't essentially be created into a duplex. If you were to want to leave, the house can't just become a duplex. Essentially. No, it has to be occupied by the principal, the by the primary owner. Yeah. Right. And, and I have concerns about the character of the neighborhood, that going from one and a half story houses, primarily through the whole neighborhood with single, single story garages, and both of these buildings becoming two full stories and a roof is quite different. Um, yes, there are a couple two story houses in the neighborhood, but I went down the road today and I counted maybe 10 in the entire neighborhood. And on our side of the road, there are actually none until further up the road when you get to the first duplex. Um, and I understand that you don't make the zoning code, but I, <clears throat> and I will take it up with zoning if necessary. It is a concern to see the neighborhood character change so drastically. Burlington has some issues, but they are pretty rigid about maintaining historic, some historic look. Um, and I'd love to see a compromise where they can get some of the space they need, but don't basically build another house and a garage that's large. Thank you for your comment. One thing that came up as I was looking at that um, um, is the, uh, there's no windows on your on your sketch. I assume that's just because you haven't. Yeah, my plan is actually not to put any windows on that side for that reason of privacy um, for anybody on that second floor and my neighbors as well. So it'd be just, windows would be on the front and back of that uh, garage unit. Okay. Is there any tree removal proposed as part of this? I wasn't planning on doing much, maybe some limbing, if anything, but... Yeah, actually, I'm kind of wondering about that. Um, Can I, you get a foundation in without no, hurting the no, trees? No, um, I, I just, I noticed at one point, it looked like you had surveying done, and I saw the pin in the front. Um, so it looks to me like they've determined that those those trees are in fact on my line or my property. The, the big hemlocks and stuff is that that's that's what that's showing, right? That's been surveyed. That's that's correct. Yes. Uh, okay. I'm wondering um, if you will have to limb those trees to get that building in there. Some of those trees are pretty wide. I don't know. Not sure about that, but I'm not sure how what their spread is compared to the line, or, or what their actual placement is on the line. But um, and I guess I'll have to look at that in more detail. Could, could you please show the proposed house again, Delilah? Just a 
be the front. Yes, that's good. Thank you. Um, is there any option? Do you have any option to move the garage further back? And would that address your concerns? I mean, is this, did you think about other options so it doesn't look like two houses? Um, yeah, going back is a, a, an option as well. We could do something like that. Um, One thing they have to be careful of is they're close to their lot coverage limit. Okay. Because mm -hmm. more pavement leading up sure. to the garage. Sure. Yeah. Right, I got it. Yep. Um, so the building coverage is fine, but it'd be almost like in order to stretch the driveway, you'd have to make it thinner, which maybe yeah. that's doable, maybe that's not, but. Mm -hmm. I don't know that for the character of the neighborhood moving it's going to do anything. Okay. All right. It's just going to put it further in the backyard. Sure. Okay. So this property backs up to a city of South Burlington easement on the other side. Um, and then behind it, I believe, is the property owned by the sports club. Mm -hmm. No, um, behind them, behind us. No, it's all sports club. It's all behind the whole. Okay. Even though Eric Farrell did all the development. Yeah, so if you go to page uh, one of the um, think staff the comments, you can see it. Yeah, right there. So the L shaped, that's mm -hmm. the sports club, and then that L shaped thing is an ease, a pedestrian easement that's owned by the city of South Burlington. Yeah, there's a. That's a pedestrian easement owned by the city of South Burlington. There's a walkway through there, like mm -hmm. path kind of thing. Is there anyone here that has another additional comments? Is there anything else you'd like to say, Sarah Nathaniel? Okay, thank you. Anything else, Devin? No. Anything else from the board? Okay, I would I would move that we close conditional use application CU 1907 of Ashley Truax. Second. Motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstention. Thank you very much, Devin. Now move on to Item seven, for the purpose of continuing, final plot application SD 1927 of Dorset Meadows Associates LC, as said at the beginning of the meeting, uh, due to a lack of a quorum, we have to reschedule this meeting. We have set a date for uh, Tuesday, November 5th. I would move that we continue final plot application SD 1927 of Dorset Meadows Associates LC for November 5th. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Item number seven to November 5th. So moving on to item number eight, continue site plan application SB 1935, the city of Burlington, Burlington International Airport, to amend a previously approved plan for an airport complex. This amendment consists of constructing a 54 square foot addition to an existing maintenance building to provide coverage storage for snow removal equipment at 1200 Airport Drive. Who is here for the applicant? Uh, Larry Lackey, Director of Engineering and Environmental Compliance. Hey, Larry. Is there any disclosures from the board? Yes. Um, my law firm, MSK Attorneys, represents the city of Burlington and the airport in the negotiation of a potential contract with the hotel that has been proposed for the airport property. I don't believe that constitutes a conflict of interest for me to sit on this application. In fact, I've sat on other applications not related to the hotel, but I just wanted to put it out there. Thank you for that, Brian. And this is a continued site plan application. You have been sworn in prior. Uh, no, uh, it got continued because um, it, got, um, it got shifted from the last meeting to this meeting. Could I have you raise your right hand, Larry, and sort of tell the whole truth under penalty of perjury? I do. Thank you very much. Um, tell us a little bit about the uh, covered store storage for snow removal equipment area. Okay. What you've got right. planned? The location of this addition is as you head up um, a, um, Aviation Avenue um, to where the um, heritage complex is, um, the FBO. To the left is where our current maintenance shop is, along with the Aviatron building that we own in an old woodshed. So that's the location. It's pretty secluded up in that area. This 
project consists of building a, a 60 by 90 foot addition to that uh, with uh, pre-engineered steel building, uh, concrete slab floor, footing, frost wall with appropriate, um, it, this is for storage only of a very expensive uh, snow removal equipment that's funded by the FAA. In fact, the equipment's probably worth three times each equipment than what this building will cost. So, so and it should be um, taken care of um, in this way. In a heated area so we also have stormwater um, infrastructure which I can explain if, if need be and uh, and an oil water separator so if you know the truck or the vehicle drips or something the, or the, the floor is washed down it goes through an oil water separator you've um, seen the uh, staff notes Larry uh, yes I have okay Item number one, uh, staff notes this calculation does not appear correct as it adds 54 square foot of impervious equal to the area of the building while the provided stormwater modeling shows a reduction in the impervious of 483 square feet. The applicant has acknowledged this error. Instead, they will provide the corrective volumes as necessary. That is correct. Yeah, correct. We, we've done a, another response to these. Right. Yeah. Good to hear. So if we're going to close, I think we need to take that additional testimony on what Okay, what can you tell us here at this time what the what those corrected values are? Uh, well, yeah, I'm just confused by this submission, Larry, because it doesn't show with the maintenance garage addition in this table that Delilah has up right now. Okay, um, well, I apologize for that. Um, am I just reading it wrong? Uh, I'm just I'm looking here. I um, I asked that to be adjusted. Maybe it's on a different sheet or something. Maybe you get the wrong sheet. I apologize. I don't have that with me right here. So we, we will fix that. All right. Well, we're going to need it. Um, it I mean, it's 5,400 square feet, and the site's about very large. <laughs> so. uh, item number two, the applicant has not provided documentation of compliance from the applicable regulatory entities responsible for airport approach cones. Staff recommends that we d request documentation of compliance with these criteria prior to concluding the hearing. The applicant has stated they will uh, have submitted for FAA approval prior to the continued hearing. FAA has 45 days to respond. If the applicant demonstrates submission, staff recommends the DRB include a condition requiring approval prior to the issuance of the zoning permit. Does the applicant have a problem with that? Uh, no, we have made our applications and we did pr provide them to staff uh, okay, so for the bu building cords and crane. Yep. Uh, for the FAA one, and those are both proof that they filed with the FAA. Uh, item number three, the Assistant Stormwater Superintendent provided comments to the applicant on the proposed oil water separator by email on September 27th, but otherwise by verbal conversation indicated the stormwater system appears to meet the requirements of 1203. The applicant provided updated materials to the Assistant Stormwater Superintendent on October 8th, and staff anticipates they'll have an update at the time of the hearing. Do we have an update at the time of the hearing? Yes, I received an email today from the Assistant Stormwater Superintendent saying they were good with the modifications and they would like the board to include that standard boilerplate condition about the applicant must maintain all stormwater infrastructure. No problem adding that as a condition? Okay, thank you very much. Number four, staff recommends the board discuss discuss with the applicant for what those four parking spaces are used for what the poor parking spaces are used and discuss whether their removal will be detrimental to the adequacy of parking areas. The applicant has stated that they will be prepared to provide a narrative description of the parking at the hearing. This is relationship the proposed structures to the site. Um, we, we have done that. We have typically at most have 15 people there. We have m uh, plenty of spots uh, without those four and we will re-assign uh, spots and add some in additional areas. So we've provided a drawing that shows that. So that was one of the questions I had about the materials that was submitted today, Larry. Mm -hmm. um, it appears, I don't know if you can zoom in on the 17 spaces striped on that page. Mm -hmm. So in your cover letter, you said that you have 17 spaces. Um, it looks like you're reconfiguring those spaces. Um, yes, I mean, we could put them on um, an angle if we needed to either way. If, I mean, it doesn't matter either way. So, um, so what Larry's email to me today said is they have a maximum of 15 employees. Um, they believe they'll have 17 available spaces that you can see how they're con proposed to be configured. Um, not sure if those spaces that are proposed to be made perpendicular as opposed to diagonal meet our dimensional requirements. Um, if you'd like, if 
I can make sure that happens or make that a condition that should be no problem. Is there room? Yes, there is room. Yeah. We can always go up a little bit further too if we have to. It looks like a little extra space. Yeah. So I'm more concerned about the depth, honestly, than the width. Hmm? I was looking more at the depth than the width, honestly. Um, well, with five and six there, is that what you're saying, Marla? Yeah. Yeah. I can make them wider. I mean, so we'll work with you to. So, so they're required to be diagonal. Is that the? No, that they're the? not. It's just that if they're switching them, they should meet the dimensional standards for parking spaces. And they currently don't. I don't know. We they're, don't have they're the details. Not. They're lines drawn on a PDF. <laughs> right, gotcha. Um, um. So I guess the question is, can those spaces be 9 by 18 with a 20-foot drive aisle in between? I don't see a problem with 9 by 18. I want, want to measure the 25 feet in between, in between them, to be right. honest. And then number five and six there, our dimensions are eight by 22, I believe. Okay, those are existing, yes. uh, oh, if they're existing, that's okay then. Um, but yeah, just, I guess. I have no problem it's, committing. It's just to challenging because we don't have the information in order to close the hearing. I'm wondering if that's something that we need to know. Well, it sounds like we need to see other too. We, I mean, we can configure it. I mean, there's plenty of space in this in entire parking lot for cars, <laughs> so. Right, okay. So if we're gonna have to continue it anyway, I think we'd just be looking for that information to be confirmed. Yeah. Along with the item number one. Uh, okay, item number five. The project requires one existing overhead utility pole to be relocated. Staff considers the scale of the project does not warrant the utilities being located underground. Staff recommends the board discuss whether the overhead electric should be, should be located under the ground. The applicant has indicated they will review with GMP what it would require to re relocate the utilities underground and be prepared to provide an update in the hearing. So essentially, you don't have to do it, but you might want to do it. Well, the power that comes to that pole is overhead. We're moving that pole. The power that comes to that pole will stay overhead, but what's already below ground from that last pole to the building will, can, will extend the underground. So we are going to stay underground. Okay. So that's that the commitment. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. You're question. going to stay. Yeah, the, the power from the pole to the building is underground already. So we have to move that pole out of the way, right? And power is coming to that pole overhead. We will extend the underground to continue it to be um, underground. Okay. And remove the overhead portion that's there now? There's no, no. The overhead portion, well, I can point pole it to the out. Building? I can point it out for you. power right now goes overhead to here, yeah. and then it's underground from there, right? So we're going to relocate this pool, okay, over here, and we'll, that will stay above ground here, and, we'll go, and then it will continue to be underground. Oh, I see. I get you now. Okay. All right. All right. Are there no other comments on that? Uh, item number six, the applicant has not provide, proposed any landscaping. Staff recommends the board require the applicant to provide the minimum required landscaping value in trees and shrubs. Staff has encouraged the applicant to develop a landscape master plan, which they can add to each time they develop another project within their PUD. The applicant has indicated they will do this prior to the next application, but they wish to enhance an existing landscape area for this project. They have not yet provided a landscaping proposal. Do you have a landscaping proposal with you today? Um, for this project, we want to propose a, a pollinator project for our uh, um, parking garage and then commit a certain time where we want to come up with a future a plan for future projects where we can put uh, trees and shrubs and stuff it's obviously difficult because of the it's an airport and we don't want trees <laughs> so so we will work something out um, you know like in a given time if you want to say 90 days or 120 days or whatever you want to work out but in the meantime we like to spend the money on this to enhance it you know, like educational um, project on the parking garage so while larry's handing that out just to give a little background um because i don't know if everybody remembers when the hotel was approved um the applicant really struggled to find 
locations for the required minimum landscaping. They were removing some existing landscaping, which was required as part of previous site plan approval, um, which had to be replaced, and then they had to add new on top of it. And at that time, um, there was some concern from a couple board members who aren't here tonight that the airport was sort of kicking the can. Um, every time you put landscaping someplace that you might have to, that you might want to build later, you're creating a snowball effect where you have to add more and more um, to make up for what you removed and for what you're adding new. So um, they had sort of asked the applicant to come up with um, sort of a master plan with a lowercase m um, of where to put landscaping that they can sort of use that as every time they do an airport project they can add to the landscaping in that area. Um, so with this application, the airport hasn't proposed that, um, but what Larry was saying is that they're willing to work on that for the next application. <clears throat> and it sounds like what you're proposing is this pollinator project instead. Can you describe that a little more? Right. Oh, I gave you my copy. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. <laughs> so we're currently working with a group uh, to sponsor and um, enhance the um, rooftop garden. And we thought that this would even add to it, spending the money here where the traveling public would have a chance to see you know, beehives and, and pollination and butterflies and all that type of stuff. Um, and these are just examples of what it would look like. I am not a beehive expert at all, so I can't elaborate a whole lot on it. Um, didn't anticipate that I'd have to bring one, but um, that's what we would, you know, propose to do. These go on the on the roof. Yep, on the of roof the, of the uh, of the airport parking garage. Right. Have you been up there before? Yeah. Okay. It's it's all it's a garden and and it also has uh, solar panels and all that type of stuff. So this will just enhance that. So you don't need that for parking. No, it's on the roof. Okay. So Yeah. And because this whole thing is the airport PUD. We have allowed. We have allowed landscaping projects to go be apart from the development or whatever is being proposed. Right. We have a we have a track record of doing of allowing things to yeah, occur on other parts of the airport. Mm -hmm. Just want to confirm that. So what you said in your letter to me earlier today, um, and I just want to confirm this because I mm -hmm. thought it was a little confusing. <clears throat> the. I guess, no, maybe it was in this presentation where I saw it. It said something about that the beehives would be in the solar panel portion of the roof. Within the fence, fence installed area. within the fence in solar array on the sixth floor. Mm -hmm. So can the public, the public can't really get to that area? Yeah, they can. They can view it. It'll be, it'll be right where they can view it, yes. Oh, so it'd be like on the edge. On the edge, yeah. It's a dumb question, but... The FAA doesn't have any problem with bees, do they? No, they have problem with birds. <laughs> a lot of birds, but not bees that I know of. <laughs> yeah. so, so is this additional greenery being added or just the apiary? We will add some additional greenery to them. Yeah. Have we ever approved a, uh, uh, this before um, in our history? Not in this way. So the standard is if the site is well landscaped, if the standards are otherwise met, the board can approve. Um, other hardscape amenities beyond trees and shrubs. Such as uh, decorative uh, statues or something like that? Yeah, so, um, you know, there was the sculptures at 20 Kimball, the Larkin Terrace, or not Larkin Terrace, um, the Larkin Micro Apartments had a wetland viewing area. Um, Allard Square has the artwork, um, lots of different things that have been considered when the site, when the landscape standards are otherwise met. Did the airport do anything with the honey? I, I, this is really early on. I don't, I don't know what she plans on doing with that, so. I, I'm certainly not opposed to creative ideas on how to meet your landscaping budget. I'm, I don't know anything about bees yeah. or whether it would work on that site, so I don't yeah. want to pretend to do, do I do, mm -hmm. but. And again, we, we plan to commit to, we, we do n understand we need a plan for future projects because of the, you know, what type of facility we have and, um, and not being able to you know, put trees wherever we want to. Oh, we need pollinators. Yeah. <laughs> 
Anything else you want to add regarding that, Marla? Um, we're sort of having a side conversation about bees and um, agricultural exemption, and if it somehow qualifies for an agricultural exemption, which only is the case, I talked to someone at the state about this early, late last week, um, only if it produces product, 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 that's why I was asking about the feed, was about does asking it about the honey. For an agricultural exemption. If it qualifies for an agricultural exemption, we lose control over it, which means that maybe, and I'm not sure if this would be the case or not, but potentially if we have no control over it, they could just remove it and then we would be stuck with net without any landscaping value. So if they're not doing anything with the honey, ironically, that's better <laughs> in this case, which sounds terrible. <laughs> well, it would, it would apply for an agricultural exemption for the purpose of what? Well, if they were to qualify for an agricultural if exemption. If they were producing honey samples. and like farmers marketing it or something, yeah, it, would, it would be considered an agricultural use, which is exempted from our regulations. Mm -hmm. um, Propeller honey. But the bees might be, but the flower, yeah, I mean the, the flowers and the rest of the landscaping would maybe not be, I don't know. <laughs> I see where you're going. I'm just, yeah. I do know other solar projects have done this type of thing, yeah. um, but in more rural settings, I think. But I mean, this could work on a green roof. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes, I've heard. I've heard solar projects too. I, I haven't. I haven't asked the second question, which is why. What, why just, why are bees and solar panels? Why why is it the it's connection? Looking for a, I mean it's it's look I mean that's land that's already sort of it's not being farmed anymore. I see. What, yeah. what can we do to add? I see. You know, like an infill de agricultural yeah. development yeah. <laughs> in between the panels. Yeah. Huh, okay. Um, there's nothing else on that. Item number seven: snow storage. I've kind of shown uh, snow storage. Applicant has not shown snow storage on the provided site plan, ironically, because you're storing snow removal equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Staff recommends the board discuss with this with the applicant. We, we resubmitted the plan. Um, we spoke with our uh, maintenance manager and we showed spots, but we also move a lot of snow. Yeah. So if it gets to be too much there, we'll bring it where it can be um, placed at, at other locations. So. Is that so where are you proposing it on this plan? Up on the top. Um, of the plan. Keep going up. Um, oh, there it is. I see it. Yeah. Right. right there. That's where Travis wants it. Um, and again, it, 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 if there's too much there, we'll move it to, we have plenty of places for snow yeah, in storage. Yeah. We have a lot of acreage. And we move it all the time. Number eight, staff recommends the board review the circulation but require the applicant to remove the arrows from the plan as a condition of approval to prevent confusion as to whether the arrows need to be painted on the ground. Does that make sense? That in our letter, yes. Yep, that's great sense. Number nine, the applicant has not submitted any information indicating the state DC has approved the impacts of wetland protection standards. The applicant has indicated they intend to submit to the state DC for approval as allowed use to the continued hearing. Staff recommends the board require evidence of this request being made prior to closing of the hearing and that the board require an issuance of the state DC permit prior to the issuance of the zoning permit. Are you okay with that um, condition? I have a question about that. Sure. Um, we made a request to uh, the wetlands and they've determined that they don't even have to come out because this would just be a, a general permit. We'll have, um, and <coughs> I apologize, um, our consultant who was going to do this had family um, issues she, she had to go deal with, wasn't able to get out and do it, but um, um, they wouldn't even have to come out uh, the state to the site and we will just do a general permit and and this is in a wetlands buffer area. It's not in the wetlands, and, and we'll take all precautions and procedures as required. So I don't, I don't know if it can be. Are you looking just for the application to go in, or, or, or you, can you make it a condition that we will apply and have a permit before we build this thing? Is it a class two wetland? Class two, yeah, type two. And I have the and I have the email from the state if you want to see from her. Uh, it's just a general permit and how she explains it's just Is in the buffer. Is that something you sent today? I didn't send this to you, I don't believe. Oh. Uh, you should have that. Yeah, let's have it in the phone. Seven hundred and seventy-one square feet of temporary wetland buffer impacts, including some fill, trench backfill, 
for a proposed pipe and stone outfall. Um, treatment system is located outside the buffer. Um, this, this is for the outfall for a stormwater treatment system. And the response is this proposal would need a general permit if impacts are under 1,000 square feet. Um, impacts are considered permanent and pipe burial would be considered temporary. Um, it appears the wetlands are at the Toa slope and the project qualifies for a general permit. I will not need a site visit. So um, typically what we do is we require the application to be submitted prior to approval and demonstrate that it's submitted prior to approval and then receipt prior to issuance of a zoning permit. Um, I don't know if that's how the bill after prior to the zoning permit and skipping the part about submitted before approval. Yeah. Yes. The latter it is fine with me. Yeah. Me too. Yes. Okay. Item number 10, the applicant has not provided a field delineation or wetland report. Therefore, staff considers this criteria cannot be evaluated at this time. The applicant has indicated they will provide this information on functions of values of the wetland to allow the board to evaluate whether they're impacted. Um, and I go, that goes back to how I answered the last question. Okay. She was unable to do that. We, um, we, she will be doing it in the next couple of weeks because of a family issue. Um, this project will um, not impact wellings. In fact, it will prove it because if you look at the, the site, um, these, these, um, this equipment will be inside now and any, you know, inside. And we have a um, stormwater system that will uh, treat the first flush or one inch of rain. Uh, before it discharges any to the well, and so it's, we're clean. We're doing a better job with this project That's than what's right. currently being done. Okay. Where is the equipment kept now? Um, in parking. Um, do you know? Um, all over the place. Um, it's, it is parked in this area without cover. That's part of the area in this area. You can see it on the, the aerial photo. But also over towards the, the north hangar on on paved areas. Um, it's been there. Uh, but there's some different uses going on now, some exciting uses going on at the North Hangar. So, and, and but we, it's been uncovered. Yeah. We do plan in the long run. We do have in our CIP to, to really look at a, a long-term bigger or nicer maintenance facility, but that's a year's out. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Item number 11, the staff considers the minimum required short-term bicycle parking for this application is two, with two long-term bicycle parking spaces, two per tenant required for building expansion of more than 5,000 square feet, but encourages the board to discuss with the applicant the bicycle parking approach for the Aviation Avenue area as a whole, as agreed upon in the previous PUD amendment, SD 1907. The applicant has indicated that they only own two buildings, the maintenance building and the Aviatron building southeast of the maintenance garage, and they intend to provide one inverted U-type rack outside and provide locking storage for the two bicycles inside. Staff considers the board should require the applicant to indicate where the bicycle parking will be located prior to closing the hearing. I'd like to correct one thing that just got said, if that's yep. okay. Um, there is a building at Vents we'd like to tear down. It's an old shop building um, right here. We do own that building. Okay. So. Okay. Thanks for that clarification. Um, and you're going to indicate where the bicycle parking will be? Right. I thought we did in the resubmittal. Um, I, thought, I thought we did. I'm sorry. Yeah, we did. And we also have, we're going to have inside storage for bikes in the new building. And um, oh, okay. Black and powder coated tube. Okay. Inside here we'll have uh, bike racks. Okay. Good. That's, where Where is that, that relative plan? to other site features that propose bicycle location? This is where people walk in. Oh, okay. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Any comments from the public? Can you state your name for the record, Dave. Dave Crawford, uh, chair of the uh, Natural Resource Committee. Um, this one is new and a lot of information came out tonight so I would preface my statements with uh, that the NRC is uh, 
has assigned a, a, develop, a work group to evaluate how we're going to handle and review the uh, applications that come before you folks. Does the NRC uh, have a position on bees? Hmm? Does the NRC have a position on bees? We don't have one, and I don't know whether we're talking about bees or trees, quite frankly. That's one of the questions I had. Uh, I got a little confused as to landscape uh, or an idea for trees someplace sounded like a good idea to have a place designated, designated on um, airport property. That looked to me like an interesting idea. But then we got off on bees under the... Um, um, bees on the garage. Hmm? Bees on top of the garage. On top of the garage. Uh, that may not be a bad place for the trees to be added to, but it didn't seem like there was any trees added for in the, in the system. See what I'm saying? Um, and uh, so, you know, we, we really don't have, I, I can't speak consi consistently and accurately as I would like to on the, the application because there was so much information that just came in. Be that as it may, it looks like a, a, a not something that we'll have any particular problem with. Thank you very much, Dave. Are there any other if, if you could sort out the tree idea in your consideration along the way, if there's going to be a, that idea sounds really interesting to me, is if there's going to be a place where you're going to have the airport plant trees and not have to remove them in the future, that is really advantageous. So. We're committed you, to hiring somebody to, to evaluate that for us um, as a commitment to this, you know giving us a period of time to get it done. That makes a lot of sense, Larry. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't any sound like there's anything that can't be solved here. I, mean, I hope so. Be nice. Any other comments from the public? Any other comments from the board? If not, I move that we, uh, we've we got some things that we need to follow up on, so we're going to continue this continued site plan application, SB 1935, the city of Burlington, Burlington International Airport, for what date might be appropriate. So we're just looking at parking spaces and impervious. Excuse me, Marla, what was the date? And landscaping. And landscaping. And landscaping. How long do you think that's going to take? Do you want to jam it in right on November 5th? We've got two short ones, a medium one, and a long one. That might be a, that might be a bit it. much. Okay, <laughs> so I would move that we do it too much? It's up to you guys. November 19th, I mean, the application deadline hasn't passed yet, so we don't know what else we have in. It'll be quick, but people's brains shut off at, you know, 1030. Yeah. <laughs> I would encourage you to think about November 19th, but also, you know, the, they very graciously agreed to not be heard last time um, because we had a shortage of time, so I don't want to extend their deadline. Are you in a time crunch where you need to on the 5th rather than the 19th? We'd like to, yeah. We, I mean, I, I can't say we're going to be, we, we're out to, uh, to, for proposals for this, um, and um, I, uh, next week I'll have a better idea where we sit from the proposals that come in. They come in on Tuesday, um, but we also have other permitting that has to get done. So either one, it, whatever works for you, sir. So we would need any revised materials by the 25th if we were to continue to put the 5th. About 10 days, like we can do that. I mean, it didn't seem too extreme to respond to those two items or three. That we All right, well then let's, let's continue. Continued site plan application, SB 1935 for November 5th. Is there if anything second? changes for us when we receive bids or how the other permitting is coming along, I'll let uh, Marla or Delilah know. Is there a second to my motion? A second. Seconded by Don. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstain. Thank, Thank you very you much, Larry. Item number nine, reconsideration of preliminary final plan application, SD 1924, Snyder Braverman Development Company, LLC. There. Oh, out there. Uh, Snyder Braverman Development Company LLC to subdivide an existing 21.74 acre lot into six lots of 0.43 acres, lot M1, 0.69 acres, lot M2, 1.33 acres, lot M3, 1.35 acres, Garden Street, 5.86 acres, lot N, and 12.08 acres, lot L, for the purpose of constructing Garden Street, 
in a project south of Guard Street on lots M1, M2, M3, which will be reviewed under a separate site application, 390 Guard Street. Who is here for the applicant? Tim McKenzie, South Burlington City Center, LLC. Hi, Tim. Ken Braverman, Snyder Braverman. Hi, Ken. Andy Rowe, Lamar Owen Dickinson. Hi, hey, Andy. Okay. Thank you for all coming back. Sure. Um, you know, we were, when we closed this, um, you had conversations with Marla and with, with Justin and others. Um, and uh, I apologize to the applicant. I apologize to staff. Um, uh, after hearing the compelling case, I said, no, we need to reopen this and discuss it further. Uh, with an effort to be fast was probably an error, my error. So anyways, that's my apology. Um, if you look at uh, the comments from staff, um, want to jump right into it? Sure. Okay. Applicant is proposing approximately 220 units on lots M1, M2, M3. Therefore, staff considers the standard requires the roadway to be connected. What would say the applicant to that comment? Um, so building the entire roadway presents some complications mm -hmm. um, related to uh, build two lines, you know, the, the, the full complement of the street. Uh, I've worked with Justin, who's been in communication with the city manager. Um, we've had some communication with the uh, city attorney, and we are in agreement that we will build the entire roadway curb to curb, that we will build the portion of the sidewalk that is in front of the first building that's going up, and we'll do a six, six foot by two minutes path the rest of the way to connect to Market Street. So it will create a hard surface the entire way. It will be the full infrastructure in front of the first building. Um, the city will, at, at some point, will take uh, immediate ownership of it. Let me back up. Um, we're working on the details with Justin and with City Council about the timing of when the ownership changes. But that's what we're working through. But we're in agreement for the purposes of this meeting that we will build the, uh, the, the full roadway curb to curb and that we will build the sidewalk and the cycle track to the extent that it, it uh, is in front of the first building that's going up. Prior to the issuance of the CEO? Is that, yes. Is that, okay. What about the sidewalk from the building south or west to the existing culvert? Can you say that again, the sidewalk from? From the south or west end of the proposed building to the existing culvert. Yep. Yeah, from the, from the, from the box culvert up past the, the first building that's going to be constructed. Perhaps it would help me. What is not what, what is not included <laughs> in the construction uh, that would be reserved for a later date when other uh, plots are developed? Uh, can I? Yeah, walk sure. up and show yeah. you. So, as you know, that the, the um, city center has built two lines as opposed to setbacks, mm -hmm. putting in sidewalks, cycle tracks in a lot that is not going to have a building on it yet that will have a future building right. will only get destroyed. Right. So uh, if this is going to be the first building that is going to be constructed, we'll build the full complement of cycle track and sidewalk from here to the edge of this, leaving this open from where, so this building can be constructed. We will put in a six foot by two minutes path the entire way to tie it into Market Street. Gotcha. And then as lot L, lot N get developed, that's when the rest of the that's features the, get, but, but the road as a passageway for the road general from public. The road from uh, curb to curb with street lights and will, will be completed. Yeah. I think that's reasonable. I mean, we don't want you to build a sidewalk only to tear it apart. Right. It, it, th there's also a question of we need to work through the issue with Justin and with City Council. There's a question of when the ownership of the road changes hands. Yeah. yeah. 
you can appropriate people to deal with that. Yeah, we're, so, we're, we're not terribly interested in owning a road that has through traffic and kids riding their bikes to school. Right. Um, I apologize for potentially beating a dead horse, but maybe I'm not following. Um, so then when you just described it would be built to the edge of what's labeled as M2 there when building on M2 is done. And then the sidewalk from along the front of M1 to the driveway would go in when lot M1 had a building go in on it? Correct. And you would be building that? Well, right now we're discussing that the city takes over ownership immediately upon the completion of the first segment and the city will do it. That's the negotiations I'm having with Justin and with the city council. Oh, I see. So the city would pay for the, the sidewalk on lot one, M1? Correct. So I'm wondering what that incomplete negotiation does to the board's ability to condition this approval. Yeah. And then, and then what would be the negotiation on a lot, of uh, lot L similar to lot M1 in which the city would own the land so they would, they would be the ones building, the city builds the sidewalk? Not the developer yeah, so of the we're, lot. we're putting no. in, we're putting, we'll be putting in the, 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 the subgrade. It's a matter of putting down the concrete. Yeah. And it doesn't make any sense to put down the concrete no, until there's a building in place. No, but to borrow this point, I understand that completely. Tim. And, and, and so it becomes an issue of ownership. Yeah. And once the city owns it, yeah, I, I, I agree. With, I understand that completely. Yeah. I, I am, I do also understand what Marla's saying about. Um, we don't know the reaction from Public Works with regards to this and when that happens, do we? Uh, I have an email that I can read to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Go I ahead. was copied on that. I, was I haven't seen it. Go ahead. Or do you have a copy? Uh, so my email reads, um, this is following a conversation. Justin, just confirming what we discussed Friday regarding Garden Street. SBCC, South Burlington City Center, LLC, will construct Garden Street South segment, curb to curb. We will install full profile cycle track and sidewalk in front of the new building to be built. I mistakenly referred to it as M1, but it's M2, but it's the, the, the new building to be built. We will continue a six foot cycle track from the end of the completed section in front of M2 building to Market Street. The city will take ownership of Garden Street immediately following the completion of the road as described above. Uh, prior to the street being open to through traffic and will complete the sidewalk and cycle track following the construction of the buildings on the respective lots. The response from Justin. Do we, I, I went on to say, do we need to formalize this agreement or, or will this agreement be a part of the DRB approval? Justin responded, yes, assuming you build Garden Street all the way back from Healthy Living to Market Street, as described, the city is willing to accept ownership as a city street once it's certified complete. So, so uh, with that, is implicit that the city accepts ownership once that's complete, they also accept the responsibility of finishing the sidewalks? Yes, it's, it's the assumption that once it's open to through traffic, it becomes the city's responsibility. Is that your reason? He, he, he went on to say, this would be a city council action and does not need to be approved by the DRB. Right. To follow up the email, we had some exchanges between my attorney and Andrew um, to understand if there needed to be some type of formal agreement before this meeting tonight. And Andrew responded, Scott, as Justin notes, it's ultimately a city council decision when to accept the street. So any pre agreement or authorization would have to go through them. Staff can recommend one course or another to city council. Uh, it sounds like Justin has no objections provided the road is certified complete, but ultimately it's in the council's hand and the executive does not have the authority to bind via an agreement that legislative decision. Otherwise, no objection to raising this email at the DRB meeting or bringing to, to council if necessary. Okay. Appreciate you sharing that. That's helpful. So Do you have any questions in, regarding to that? Go ahead. So I guess what 
the requested condition is that this subdivision requires the road to be built curb to curb from Garden Street to Market, from the existing culvert to Market Street. Mm -hmm. A sidewalk in front of M2. From the existing culvert to the edge of law M2. Correct. And then a six foot wide asphalt cycle track with sub base from the edge of law M2 to Market Street. Correct. Once the city accepts the road, as I understand it, there, the city's on the hook for building the cycle track and the, from, from, the, from the lot M1 to the... Building the sidewalk, yeah. yeah. So when curb to curb doesn't include street trees and doesn't include lighting fixtures. Yes, it does. Yeah, I heard you say lighting. I didn't know it was street trees. But aren't those outside the curb? Would you like it to see the profile? between the curb and the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. actually, I, I think I'm just confused about what's included in the profile. They are outside the curb, but I think Tim's saying that in addition to the curb, the street lighting and the street trees okay. would go yeah, in initially uh, as well. Uh, uh, they, you are, they are outside the curb, but it, it's inside of, the, inside of the sidewalks. So, yes, we will, oh, okay. be, we will be doing... Am I passing that around? I don't think we have a copy of it. And it's hard, I, if it's hard for me ima to imagine, I imagine it's harder for them to imagine because they don't work it every day. So I should have said inside the inside of the the green strip line, inside of the sidewalk line. Well, actually, from there to there. Okay. Okay. As I said, as, you, as you're aware, in a typical developer development, which is traffic is typically just for that development, the city won't take ownership of the road for a couple of years. We have a tremendous amount of anxiety over this becoming a city street, not under city ownership. Understood. Liability and... Liability, right. exactly. So just to fully vet this, I'm getting there. <laughs> what if a different building were built first, say the building on lot M1 oh, yeah. instead of lot M2. Is there well, I, I, we fully understand that to build, to, 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 for the building to be complete, to have its CO, we need to put full infrastructure, um, cycle track, sidewalk. I, I guess what we would do is build the, uh, um, put the full infrastructure in front of M1 and extend the six foot cycle track on each side of it. I mean, what Justin wanted was a, a hard surface for pedestrian and bikes the length of, this, of the street. Yep, I think that, works. that works for us. I'm happy, especially that the trees and the lights and everything. So, any other comments from the board? No, we have some more stuff here. Or did we already discuss it all? The board determined the board reference standards don't require the road to be connected. What number are you on, Matt? Yeah, uh, I was on number two. I'm just trying to. We sort of went free form here. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to repeat myself. And we have. So that's. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So skip number two because we've already come to that conclusion that the road's been going to be built. Okay, number three, staff considers that a turnaround of minimum dimensions described in LDR figures 15.1F proposed 15.1H may not physically fit into the space available when given consideration of the proposed storm ponds. It recommends the board require the applicant to provide a phasing plan to show the proposed configuration of the turnaround should the board determine that the above reference standards do not require the road to be connected. No. So we don't deal with that, right? Because that's already taken care. Because we're taking care of the road. Okay. Okay. Great. Right. Thank you. Uh, any comments from the public regarding this? Okay. Well, I would move that we close preliminary uh, and final plot application SD, the reconsideration of SD 1924-390 Market Street preliminary final plot application. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Brian. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Great. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have item number 10, the minutes of October 1st, 2019. I was not present. 
Um, but if uh, yes, so I don't have them on me either. Yeah, I forgot to print them. I think I realized that <laughs> I wasn't there. You can still vote on them if you want. No, I. Uh, I did read them, and there's a few editorials, but I can't find it on my screen. Nothing significant. So I would move approval, and I was there. Do we have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Jim. All in favor of approving the minutes from October 1st, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstain. Great. Uh, 11, other business? Um, any other business? Then that's it for the Development Review Board on October 15th. Thank you very much.